Welcome back to Central Coast Disc Golf. This is lead card action from round two of the 2023 Beaver State Fling presented by Innova. I'm your host, Nate Perkins, joined here today with Connor O'Reilly. Connor, not quite the front we were looking for from this card. A lot of really good golf. What are we gonna see on the back? That pressure is mounting and the shots are difficult on the back nine to score birdies. So these players are gonna feel that added layer of trying to reposition themselves. As you see Eagle McMahon, Andrew Presnell coming off that chase card, making moves. Calvin Heimberg also, we know he is no stranger to chasing down a win. And here we are on the 10th, pretty easy hole. Walk us through it, Nate. I mean, second easiest hole on the course. Little bit of OB there on the left side where the, the river comes into play. But this is just wide open hyzer. Most players are pushing it 450 to 500 feet, leaving themselves 250 to 200 into this green here. I feel like Garrett's the only player we've seen so far not throw a one angle shot off the tee here. With Anthony's power, I, I could see him maybe trying to match that. Let's see. And what What's Aaron throwing for his max distance disc? Aaron's going to be going nuke or nuke OS a lot of times. He also has a couple forces in the bag. Um, that might have been a force there. I think he really likes the force for backhands a lot of times. Oh, no. Stayed safe? No way. I don't, I feel like it couldn't have, but if he did, that is, is so fortunate. So that is not the run up of a man who was throwing a one angle shot. Oh. <laughs> Listering <laughs> speed. We need a distance marker on that. Connor, what do you think? 600? We'll have to wait and see for his approach. Yeah, I'd bet he pushed at least mid fives there. Nico leaking a little left too. This green, this fairway is super fast. What a dig. That is, you cannot rely on that to happen. It just feels so silly if you find OB left here when there's all the room in the world out right. Yeah, especially knowing that you can you can literally be on the fairway of nine and you still might be able to birdie. Nico and Aaron both have lengthy circle one putts for birdie. Oh, so the card was kind of talking about how his disc hit and stayed safe. It bounced back out to the right. That is Garrett absolutely got away with one here. And let's see where that shot ended up. Hopefully he's got a look. Okay, so he has about 140 into the green here. <laughs> yeah, Anthony. So he threw it 560 or so. <laughs> Yeah, no one plays plays a standstill into this green. The goose chance for Aaron. Takes his time, buries that one. Whole tens of birdie, this whole card is really looking to pick up. Nico trying to find his grip. That's the one. It is very humid out here, so definitely a different condition than we've played in a lot of tournaments in terms of just how the grips grips reacting. Ooh. 
No pars for this card today on 10. Yeah, after, maybe we saw. After this hole, you typically walk up this hill to the dream hole. This year, we, we, we track back down around that little hill and over to the Philobatross hole. A bit more walking this year with the Riverbend course and the way that they kind of utilize the entire property. For sure, but the golf is quality and these long holes create so much excitement for you fans. A great drive here on 11 land. Somewhere around here, if you can hug the left side of the fairway, you will have better options into the green. Very guarded approach though. This one takes some kind of a skinny flex shot unless you just put it so far that you can throw the towering hyzer into this one. Tucked about 40 feet left of this corner here. Hole 11 takes two incredible shots to birdie. Everyone looking to put it out flat or on hyzer, depending on the power level they want to throw. Aaron a bit wide. Yeah, kind of hanging on to both of those last two drives a little bit longer than he would have liked. Further left you are on this fairway, the more it kind of opens up that angle. Wow, a lot of speed out of Double G's hand there. That's going to be prime positioning. And let's see how these two monster players compare pretty close right there yeah a little more distance for ab and gets even further to the left but still just far enough out of the rough to have a clean run up it's gonna be a great position for anthony it's the destroyer versus the nuke <laughs> oh nico kind of pops out of a little hole there and i heard that eagle mcmahon Put his drive to the bottom of that rise and upslope there with the long grass off the tee. You know, you watch guys like Garrett and Anthony throw, and you're like, man, they're kind of in a different category of those other humans. And then Eagle McMahon is a literal alien, you guys. He does things that no other human can even dream of. It's hard to fathom that. Oh, that's scooping back out. Oh, it just gets the top of that cedar, knocks it down. Either a T bird or leopard out of double G, it looks like, or maybe even that firebird. Yeah, it does have the three different color glow. I think it's that firebird, which kind of makes sense for the shape there. Okay, so Anthony doesn't really have a clean run up, but still able to get the towering hyzer off. Barely catches the last tree to beat. Yeah, a lot of frustration out of Anthony so far this round. He's a very vocal player though, and he's not firing at all cylinders. He, he lets his frustrations be known. Can't wow. blame him when you feel like you have a cheat code on every <laughs> yeah. hole and you're not birdieing. Yeah, especially with his forehand and backhand combo, he just he has an answer for every shot, really. Nico able to find a stance underneath there. I was worried about that. Almost makes good on circle two. His foot slipped again. Those shoes, Aaron, this time, buddy. Come on, idiot. Let's get him a new pair right now. That's twice this round.
Being at a place like Milo where there's just, there's just so much less noise pollution than we're used to at other places, like it's nice being able to hear the players' thoughts and hear the little rumblings that happen after the shots that other places might get kind of drowned out. Here it keeps peeking over at the road. Maybe some distractions affecting him there. Yeah, it's the, the one thing that is distracting out here is that we, it's a state park. So some of these greens have the roads right next to them. And, you know, spectators, players, event staff are kind of coming in and out. And it's just like a chance thing whether or not you get a car while, while you're putting. It's funny. Aaron's actually been wearing his chalk bag inside of his pocket when he puts so he can just hit it hit his pocket with for a couple extra taps and get that powder when he needs it instead of having to drop it on the ground pick it up probably the only player to do that have never heard of anyone doing that great look at ab's 550 foot nuke shot there on 11 after the after the putts on 11 you walk up the hill and you walk back through a couple of the par threes that we used to play on the west course head over to the tee pad of the dream hole got a pretty good look at the clackamas river this hole descends about 30 feet from the tee to the green 440 but because it's downhill we can see players go mid fairway or driver and we are seeing Gossage, go. Is this the Buzz OS? That is it. He's a madman. Buzz OS. Such an aggressive play style. I get, you gotta love it. He, he just picks the disc that he can throw as hard as he can every time. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> as hard and as flat as he can. You guys, there's one word to describe this tee shot. It's just glorious. This, this, is, this is disc golf at its finest. It's a fir tree on the left of the pin, a cypress on the right. And if you do go high speed, you really can use those to your benefit. Ooh, Anthony's scaring the cameraman. You know, when his disc is coming in, you got to be ready to move. Luckily, that grass holds him up, but a bit short of where he wanted to be. Nico playing the flex with a fairway driver, it looks like. And that was kind of a classic Nico flex line. A little early out of the hand, but... Just the shape he was intending. For sure. How he how he became what he became known for really was pulling over on those overstable discs. Yeah, he's had a big influence on the game with that that shot and kind of known for it. I, I myself even sometimes think about trying to imitate Nico when I'm throwing those force over flex over stable. Garrett with the Sonic. Yeah, it didn't seem like his heart was fully in that one. Anthony's been so close, but just hasn't quite been able to get the scores going. He's had a number of chain hits for birdie that just haven't stuck. And you know, Connor, this this round here by this lead card is is really showing us like how important it is to be dialed at 400 to 450 off the tee here. These players aren't playing bad, but they're just not scoring as much as some of the competitors that are chasing them down as we see here.
The J, it's kind of like a companion disc to the Rock, not quite as overstable. So it's more point and shoot than the Rock is, but it's still got really good torque resistance and, and it plays really well in the wind and you can throw it sidearm. And yeah, like Nate said, this isn't one of those courses you can throw 85 percentile of a good shot and score. A lot of times you have to execute your mind's eye. Otherwise, you're going to have a lot of long looks all day and it's going to be tough. If you're not mentally crisp on every tee shot out here, you're going to start feeling that pressure mounting. And hole 13 is a very specific one. We saw the pin get moved to the right from previous years. Really a true flip up backhand hyzer. You can play more directly at it if you're willing to take kind of t test that left side of the gap more, but most players playing kind of a hyzer flip up. Only a couple kind of easier shots on this course. A lot of them are high level scores like the 13th here. Oh, Gossage chain high clearing left. He almost rung that one. Is that Athena? I'm not sure. I, I don't recognize that orange disc I, or that yellow disc. I saw him messing with like a tracker in practice and or maybe it was a stalker. So I'm not sure on that one. Kind of looks slower speed. Definitely stalker some kind of fairway. Sweet. Seven speed. Anthony getting a beautiful flip up off of this one. Did he play mid range? Yeah, I believe that's Buzz Connor. Wow, it's nasty. He's a bad dude. This looks ideal out of Nico if he can he's get it to edge. fight. Ooh, that little fern just kind of held him out of maybe a park job. Either way, he's got himself a look, and he's made a couple in that range today. crafty approach there can get pretty gnarly over there on that right side Nico using all of that piece of paper to the left of his lie and makes good great birdie pickup for Lo Castro I think Nico's done a good job since his return to action and just trying to be a little less volatile, a little more kind of relaxed, and he's been playing well. Yeah, he really has. Definitely has a a different different attitude this year. I think it's pretty clear to a lot of the tour. Gossett showing quite a bit of frustration after that guarded look. Just, yeah, you can hear him still kind of exclaiming about that. It's, it's a course that if you're not, and even then, like he he felt like he threw a great drive, I'm sure, and just wasn't quite rewarded. Maybe got some blackberry raking his hand on the way through on the putt. Clean one, got an eco. Hole 14, looking to shape a drive either around these two trees or try and hit the field goal. Get out here into the open. You're left with 350 to 300 into this green. This fairway kind of shapes from left to right. Protected green with some logs out at the circle's edge. Really the the difficult part of this par four is executing this drive. The gap's big, ceiling's kind of low, but it's just a, such a specific baby Anheuser shape with an overstaple disc. Ooh, AB gets the field goal split after missing his angle. Unfortunately, it takes another little trickle skip off that T pad up there, but from there, the lean out forehand is going to be only in the 270 foot range or so. Like Nate said though, it's very 
specific line to hit on the right side like Nico did right there, but as a player, you can almost get vague at times on this one, knowing that even if you go through the field goal or miss left of it at times, you can get to a great positioning off to the left of the fairway. So it adds a layer of difficulty to this one, just like it can make you kind of get in between shots. Gossage, exactly what he was looking for right there. And, and Nico, after Nico hit, he's, he's looking at like a bit over 400. So it's not impossible to get up and down if you hit those trees, but it just makes it so difficult. And Garrett checking up right there at the short pad. That's a great spot to attack from, especially with the backhand turnover. Yeah, if you want to throw back into, into this green, you better be on that left 10% of this fairway probably because it's going to be a tough window without it. Just how low that low that ceiling is coming into the green. Just over 400 feet for Nico. And he just gets over on top of that bayonet and just doesn't have the stability. And he's not going to be happy about that shot. Oh, Garrett. Garrett actually going forehand, Connor. This is probably 330, 350. Nice hyzer angle. Can it drop below the gap? Oh, double G making it look easy. I got to find him on the course today. Give him a little shout for that one. Typically, we'd see him shape a, you know, a rock or maybe even a, a putter at that range. Yeah, I think that if he had any more height coming in, I feel like we'd see him go to that flippy orange rock, but it's just such a narrow little window and you really need the disc to finish pretty steeply to the right at the end. Captain's Raptor for AB. Yeah, finds a way to 25 feet. Nico probably looking to give this one a bid and use that upslope to collect his distance if he misses. Another tough stance for Gossage. Ooh, that one did not look very good. That's back-to-back -back holes where he just wasn't able to take his normal stance and just didn't, didn't generate the spin he needed to. Anthony punches it home, leading the card at six down currently. If he can get two or three of the last four, all of a sudden his slow round has become something pretty respectable. Garrett going backhand forehand combo for the birdie. Rare to see him bust out the forehand, but this approach really suits it. Hole 15. We combined two tough par threes into the most challenging hole on the course. This par four is so particular off the tee, and if you aren't willing to go big backhand turnover, the birdie is almost out of the question. Great turnovers to get somewhere equal distance with that tee pad you saw there on the right. And then we have a towering Anheuser into one of the most protected sloped greens on the course. The gap is just so late and then it's like a direct dog leg to the right and this big dead tree with all the branches just, it's so pesky, it just gets in the way. We saw only two birdies here yesterday. Can we have any today? Ooh, hey, be going buzz. A pretty conservative release there. I was kind of expecting a monster rip, but he knows what he's doing. I think he's putting himself in a position for either a towering Annie or potentially a roller. Yeah, and these guys playing more of a mid-height shot on these. We're used to seeing those backhands go way up in the air, like Nate was saying, so... Surprising the wind kind of coming at the face right now, which is actually way better for this hold yeah. than the tailwind we saw yesterday. That was good. 
Can Nico get it to hold? Whoa, it's way up there, you guys. About as good as we've seen. And look at that angle that Gossage is lining up. This is too much fun. Aaron wants a birdie here, you guys. He would play a forehand if he was looking for par. But he's going nuke, forcing it over. And that just stall fell to the ground. That was odd. It was weird. What do you think? Like 400 into the green here? Yeah, Garrett should have right around that 400 range. You can just hear the grunt. What is the Cheshire hand. Cat? Is that it's just a, wraith. a flippy wraith? Yeah. yeah. Just an old star wraith. Nice flat top. And if that doesn't show you how hard that shot is, I don't know what will. That's Garrett Gurthy going full sin with the grunt. Yeah. And, and he's not even close. He's 100 out. Yeah, and throughout the round, you've probably heard Garrett and Nico utilizing that grunt for the extra power that it will lend you. It's scientifically proven. Anthony and Gossage said, eh, we don't need that yet. We're young guns. <laughs> wow. 75 miles per hour. Just blast it past the gap. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a bad spot over there. There's like one little high window that you can... Maybe get up and down, but that's that's trouble. You could just hear that. Yeah, Anthony disc might need a little barrier. range finder on that one because he just blistered that disc. That's a really tricky spot. Nico is going to have to lean out, and he's probably going to have like a little pitch turnover shot. It's if you're not like at the base of the upslope, it's so hard to give yourself a chance to make this. Aaron finds. A very fortunate window in here. There's kind of a little walking path cleared out on the right, so there are some gaps. Hear it playing Sonic, bending it there to the green. Nico skies it a bit on that tricky short approach. And oh, I guess so we, we missed Anthony's third shot, so this is for par. It can get pretty tricky from back there, too. Ooh, good stick. This one can definitely cause some brutal rollaways. More times than not, honestly, if you hit that cage, you're headed all the way back down the hill. Yeah, good par from Garrett. He's going to be picking one up on AB. This is big time right here. Look at this lie, Connor. This is for single bogey. Oh, Anthony. And he still has work to do. Man, hey, that second shot was just pretty fatal there to fly past the gap like that. Maybe you should have thrown slower disc or something. Like we said yesterday, we saw only two birdies here. That number doubled on day two. Eagle McMahon, Drew Gibson, AJ Carey, and our good friend Tall Paul Oman grabbing a three here. Just four players out of 120. This hole is so difficult. Oh, this was a fun shot to watch it just kind of stalled out and I, f I feel like that's common to see the driver even on the good angle it just is so steep nose is too up and it just stalls out finds the wood line left and eagle mcmahon andrew presnell 
extending their lead here. This card really needs to find some birdies. This is a pretty good opportunity here. Hole 16, just 660 feet. Low ceiling drive off the tee, but they've pushed this one back. Only 60 feet back, but it makes a world of a difference for the shape required. Yeah, it went from some kind of pitch hyzer in to now you have to shape a straight shot or even some kind of a turnover. So great change here. Birdies are available on the last three holes, but they are well earned. Oh, Garrett chasing the squirrel off. Yeah, it's good. Not quite as straight as you would like. He's going to be forced to throw a hyzer into the green. Aaron just revs a little too flat on that one. That's going to be almost out of the question, birdie-wise. Oh, yeah. oh, fortunate ground action from Nico. Got that a little been... dirt under that tree. That was <laughs> sweet. Could have been a disastrous lie if he was behind that branch. Anthony a little bit low, but gets to a scoreable spot. Aaron has some kind of option here, it looks like. Not nearly as bad as we expected. Going to that Buzz OS, a little bit of turn. Just fights out a touch early. AB just going putter into the green here. Eases off on it just a bit, but he'll be at the edge of circle one. No way. Wow. Two in one hole. Super fortunate action for Nico. Hole 16 wants him to score. Garrett pures that one. What touch. This can be a scary green and definitely slopes away to that to that uh, road pretty quick. Yeah, it's just like 22 feet to the road. Yeah, good bounce back from Anthony. He's going to actually need two more birdies if he wants to maintain a spot on that lead card. And Nico not taking advantage of that good fortune. He was lended. Ooh. Thought that might be low out of Gossage, but gets the rise. Yeah, Aaron just stringing together pars right now. Been kind of frustrated. Only two more opportunities. Hole 17, formerly known as the Genius Hole, as Nate dubbed it yesterday, the Evil Genius Hole. Now I love it. Throw some kind of a straight hyzer flip shot off of the tee. Ideally, you want to be somewhere around here, or the bigger shots will get down into this kind of bowl, maybe be on the side slope there. Second shot across the out of bounds road, you're going to need to maybe play a gentle flex on something to get as much distance as you possibly can. And you want that distance because the less you have to have in on this touchy approach onto the island green full of wood chips, the better. A great par five in my opinion. Garrett just putting nothing on that, just touching it out there. Buttery smooth. I like that play. I mean, Garrett could push this drive long, but honestly, if you're up on that hill, it kind of opens up your angles and you can really stretch a driver down the road. 
Yeah, and then you have a flat ground run up, whereas the spot Anthony's getting to, he pushed it far enough. He's down in the flat, but there's a couple spots short of where he was where you can have a down slope lie mm -hmm. run up or a side slope run up. And we're going to get a good look at the difference in the angle that Garrett and AB have. You guys can make the call what you think is the better play. Should you try and push this drive down the hill or should you just try and land right where that spotter's at and then shape a, a big shot on your second? Garrett's or Gossage is going to be very tucked to the right there. He's going to have to really play some kind of a flex line to access any distance on his second. Nico's is fading early, but there's more room than you feel off the tee over there. And that's actually going to be probably the most ideal spot of the group yeah. in terms of the line he can shape. Yeah, closer to the road, the better. Wow, what trust out of double G, just a full send, a flex there. <laughs> that is <laughs> such a high-level shot. Probably the best shot of the round so far. That is special from Garrett. He's going to be inside 200. Clean look. Nico coming out a bit early, but that is the safe miss, and he knows it. Probably going to have less than 200 feet in from there. Okay, Aaron going to the forehand. That angle was too much to try the backhand turnover. But wow, just pushes it so far on the backside. It's a great spot. Yeah, absolutely. Finds his way around all the trees. No way, Connor. That was some crazy ground play. What and a tragic miss from AB. Yeah, huge misfire. And another so out of bounds. for a six from 20 feet or so. You do get to advance to the island if your disc goes across it at any point. I'd almost like to see this one made into a true island green next year with the drop zone across. A little extra excitement and a little extra layer of pressure. Really well played hole from Garrett. And that is monumental for his chances at defending his title as Eagle McMahon and Edrew Presnell both birdie the 17th. Eagle moves himself to 19 under par. Anthony with the double out of bounds bogey. He was right there on the verge of putting together that impressive round with a strong finish, but these final holes are tricky. Really good finishing stretch here. Nico also takes birdie. Garrett says one more. Almost there, G. You can see Nico more than any player on this card will use his lower body momentum to add extra power into the shot. All right, after really difficult par five on the 17th, we have one of the softer par fours to finish up this gold layout you're looking for 350 to 400 off the tee you want to hyzer just in front of the big fir tree off in the distance and then you're left with a little left to right shape into this green a little bit of ob deep on this one which has been coming into play looks like garrett's actually going to shape something big on the left side of this first tree we saw round one him catch that tree on the left. Let's see if he clears it today. Wow. There's the line that he's looking for, and Garrett is pinned high with the 
standstill putter approach. That is so impressive. That's probably one of the best air shots ever thrown on the hole, Connor. It has to be. I mean, he's like he said, 150 you thought, in. You thought my last shot was the best of the round? Check this out. Nico playing more of the stock shot. Just a setup hyzer to leave yourself something in the 375 to 350 foot range coming in. Aaron going to the Raptor, maybe looking for less ground play to not test that out of bounds left, but that's going to be pinched. I heard Anthony's going roller here. Oh, he said goodness. he had some putts. The hat's off. Can he do it? Oh, it had some speed, too. If he laid it down a little earlier. You could hear everyone and their mama wanted to see that one come through. Anthony and Garrett are such fun players to watch. And so is everybody on this card. And really, pretty much everybody in these fields. Come out to a Disc Golf Pro Tour event. But even the lower cards, you're going to have amazing players. Entertainment everywhere. Well, honestly, when you... when you The further down you watch, the less spectators you have. You can get up close and personal yeah, you, on the shots. You it's, get that intimacy. The players kind of, you know, are more okay sometimes with letting you get in close. Yeah. And you get to hear those conversations. It's... It's a really good way as a, as a fan, especially earlier in the day, to try to get some action. Plus, nowadays, the fields are so strong. You can be on the 10th card, and you can have three or four players with the stuff to win a tournament every time, you know? So, Garrett just... He's <laughs> breaking the hole apart. That is probably 575 off the tee. And Gossage... Goes birdie birdie to close out his round after six pars in a row. He still shot six down. And yeah. he's going to be just four off. Six down with some, honestly, some putting woes, especially early and in the midsection. So if Aaron can get the putter rolling tomorrow, who knows what can happen. Carrot for the turkey finish. Just breaking some of these holes with his power and his shot selection yeah that's big time he's just going to be one off eagle mcmahon <laughs> what a beautiful weekend for disc golf and what an incredible place to be playing it's an honor to be here in the booth with you nate and Super excited for you guys to see the final round action tomorrow. Aaron Gossage fired up. He's ready to make a chase. Garrett Gerthy kept it clean. Only one on the card to do so. Take a look at that leaderboard. Yeah, Andrew Presnell tying Eagle McMahon for the hot round, finding himself on the lead card alongside Calvin Heinberg, Garrett Gerthy. We got Ricky Wysocki chasing him down. Good to see Rick back here in action. And thank you guys for joining us here on Central Coast Disc Golf. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you thought of our players during round two. And from Connor O'Reilly and Nate Perkins, we will see you for the final round of the historic Beaver State Fling from here in Oregon. Love you guys. See you soon.